Hi everyone, it is Kristen and welcome back for another Artist Spotlight video. Today I'm introducing or reintroducing you to Jen of the Young Soul Jewelry. Jen has been on the channel before sharing a really awesome tutorial about um, dried flowers, how to make a slab with dried flowers. Today she's doing a tutorial on this cable knit sweater look. I think it's perfect for fall, winter, holidays that kind of thing so i hope you guys will go check her out she's a super talented artist she's here to share with you guys this tutorial show her some support give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below let's get into the video hey friends this is jen with the young soul jewelry and i am so excited to share another fun tutorial with you guys thank you Kristen, for letting me be a part of your channel again i am super excited today we are going to make a woven or knit slab with clay to make earrings this is one of my favorite techniques to use mostly in the fall and winter because the earrings look like a sweater and of course you wear a sweater in the fall or winter um, the supplies we will need today are clay a clay extruder tool a blade which i've got right here and cutters you can find a rotary tool like this at your local craft store or on amazon um, kristen can um, tag a link to one um, below your tool will come with many different discs that you can use um, they come in all shapes and sizes for this project we will be using a round disc um, now it just depending on oh i'm out of focus just depending on what you want your um slab to look like if you want the um, strands to be smaller or larger will depend on what disc you will use i think for today's purposes we're going to go with the larger disc um, or the larger holes so that way it's easier for you guys to see what i am doing so now i um i have already let me see if I can show you guys. <laughs> I have already put um, clay in my extruder and I have already made a base slab. Now I um, put this base slab through my machine at a, um, a two millimeter, I believe. You want it to be pretty thin, but I still like my earrings to be a little on the thicker side. So um, this is rolled out on a two. So then I just um, made a good size snake with the rest of my clay and I'm going to put the disc in there and put the top on and then we will use the tool to make a bunch of like noodles is what I call them. So some people have their tool connected to a um, power drill which I think is so cool and it makes it come out super fast but I'm going to use my muscles for this today. So you see, as you start to turn, I keep getting out of focus, I'm so sorry. As you start to turn, you're going to get these um, fun clay noodles. Okay, so now that we've got our noodles, I'm going to cut these, set my tool aside, and I will show you what we need to do next. Okay, so my noodles were pretty long, so I went ahead and cut them in half. Now, most people, or at least I thought at the beginning, is that um, makers actually braided their pieces. But I'm going to show you a really fun tip on how to easily make your slab look like you actually braided pieces. So you're going to take two pieces, or you could just take one piece and fold it like this. And we're going to twist these into a rope like this. So I'm starting out twisting this piece and I'm twisting it towards the left. And it may come loose while you're doing it, but you can just simply twist both ends and you've got this twisted noodle. So what you're going to do, this is still a little long, but we're going to put it at the edge of our slab. Okay, for our next strand, we're gonna do the same exact thing, except we're gonna twist these towards the right. So every time you do a twist, you're gonna twist them in the opposite direction of the one you did before. All right, so this has been twisted towards the right. So when we lay this twist, next to this twist, we get 
what looks like a braid. And then you're just gonna lightly press that into your base slab. This is so cool to me, and the first time I did it, I was just honestly <laughs> amazed with it because it makes something that looks so difficult. You actually see that it's so simple to do and anyone can do it. I did these slabs when I was just starting out as a new maker. So you can do this at any level. So what I like to do with my woven slabs is I like to do a braid and then I like to do just one noodle or one string to kind of break up the pattern. I think it really makes a difference, which of course you can do all braids. You can do a couple braids and then a couple straight pieces, whatever you'd like to do. So this next piece again, we're just going to twist towards the left. I'm interrupting this video for one quick minute just to make sure that you know about all the amazing resources that we have for you over in our Etsy shop for polymer clay artists. So the first one is the complete guide to polymer clay earrings. This is a step-by-step -step guide. All the details of the best clays to use, conditioning your clay, baking your clay, literally everything is in this ebook, more than we can cover in videos and things like that. Um, just because there's a ton of it. Um, a huge resource list with links and that sort of thing. So that's over in the Etsy shop. Another thing is the Getting Started on Etsy book. It's a complete guide to getting started on Etsy. So if you're just starting out and you're interested in selling your polymer clay earrings, this is a great resource for you to be able to hit the ground running, get those items listed, and hopefully start making sales. Another one is our brand new product photography ebook. This one is huge. If you're selling online, your product photos need to stand out and be bright and beautiful. And sometimes that can be a little bit tricky if you don't have much experience. So this product photography ebook will walk you through the steps of getting fantastic photos with, um, you know, not super expensive equipment and things like that. Just little tricks and things that you can use to get the best photos possible. And lastly, we have polymer clay color recipes. So I have tons of kits over there with a huge variety of colors. I have a fall one that's out now, a Christmas one. Um, we've got pinks, purples, one with just like a wide variety. So those recipes tell you exactly what colors to blend together to make whatever color it is that you're looking for. So that's also a great resource for polymer clay artists. All right, I'm done with a little advertisement in this video. I hope you'll check us out on Etsy. The link will be in the description box down below and we are at etsy.com slash shop slash dash and dainty. All right, let's get back to the video. Lay it down. And I just like to very lightly just pat it as I go. So that way I know it's getting stuck to that base slab. And then this one, of course, we're going to twist to the right. I find also that when you do these slabs, if you do make your um, your strings or your noodles, as I call them, a little thicker, they, um, they twist easier. So now you can see that we are getting a beautiful braided knit pattern here. I need to run some more clay through my extruder and I will come back and finish the slab. <music> my slab complete I like to take my blade and I just like to kind of push in on all of the four sides I'm not really sure if this does anything but this is just something that I like to do kind of makes me feel like it's a little more secure and then again very lightly you can press with your hands without distorting the look of the knit I've decided on two shapes for this slab, so I'm going to go ahead and get these cut out, and I'm hoping I have room to do a few pairs of studs. I like to use an acrylic block to cut my shapes, especially when it's something thicker like this. It just helps me get a good clean cut 
down through the whole piece. So this is a good example here, if you did not know this trick. Um, if your piece gets stuck in your cutter, I like to use just a dry, fluffy paintbrush and just kind of press into there and it should come out for you and it doesn't damage the piece. You can also use a little bit of cornstarch on your cutter and that helps for it not to get stuck as well. See, much easier. <laughs> Next, I'm going to pull up all of the excess clay. Let's see how well we can get this done here. I have set my oven to 275 and I will let these bake for probably between 45 minutes to an hour. I'm going to put these on a piece of printer paper. I find that when I bake my pieces on printer paper, it always gives me that smooth, um, pretty back without putting those shiny spots in it. That can sometimes happen when you just put it onto a regular pan. All right, I'm gonna get these in the oven and I will come back and show you what they look like after they are assembled. Okay guys, here is the final product. I love how I paired this wood stud with this pair and the gold is so pretty with this green. I just love this technique so much. The pattern is so fun and it just gives your earrings so much character. Like I said earlier, this is such a great design for the fall and winter. And um, I hope you guys got some useful tips from my tutorial, and I hope that you all make some beautiful knit and woven earrings of your own. Kristen, again, thank you so much for letting me be a part of your channel and having me on as a guest. Thank you guys. Bye.